happy Monday, beautiful souls. Happy full moon. It's the first full moon of 2022. It's late, coming on late. And I'm going to pull, I'm going to shuffle some Oracle, or these aren't Oracle cards, actually. These are um, tarot, Native American tarot called Vision Quest. So if you all haven't gotten the memo yet, I'm a woo-woo girl now. I believe in energy. <laughs> Hi, Bri. My number one fan baby daddy's on, guys. Um, so I believe in energy. And I've had too many experiences now where the perfect card pops out, the perfect card or cards pop out. So I've already done my little prayer that I do. And I'm going to do a little shuffle. Oh, shit. A lot of them just fell out. <laughs> when they fall out all at once like that, I don't believe it. All right. They're going back in. Intending that we get a message that we all need tonight. Okay, cool. Thank you so much. Enjoy your football. All right. All right, I'm going to shuffle one more time. One card came out. I'm going to shuffle one more time. Okay. Oh, like a thousand cards came out. Okay. So the first card that came out of the last thousand is the one that I'm going to, the second one that I'm going to read. And then another card just came out. So I'm gonna read three cards. Oh, wow. Okay. So we have the Ace of Water. That was the first one. The second one is the Lovers. And the third one is Pleasure. So we might have a saucy little reading on our hands. Buckle up. <laughs> okay. So now I'm going to read from my little booklet. And then sometimes you can tie them all together. I just trust that as I read these, like sometimes I'll get intuitive messages of stuff to say. And I'll say it. That's the way it works. I didn't think I was that tired, but I kind of feel a little like tired and kind of <laughs> silly and uh, what else? I don't know. Weird. <laughs> Ace of water. Where are you? Here it is. Oh my goodness. This is okay. So the Ace of water means fertility. Then we have the lovers. Then we have the pleasure card. So oh, wow. <laughs> okay. So the essence of the Ace of water card, fertility, emotional overflowing, Love, fulfillment, happiness, gratitude, connection to the very source of our being. The inner message of this card, mm, the source of life is so juicy, it fertilizes everything. Since you are no longer intent on being paralyzed by fears of separation, you are ready to get in touch with the life spring inside you. Simply fall into the inner juiciness that wells up in its, on its own accord, as you will notice from now on. Allow all feelings to arise and dissolve. No judging them. Feel them completely without struggling to avoid 
or cling to them. Then there will be harmony within and without. And then the outward manifestation is, your feelings can flow much more freely now and consequently change your lifestyle. By openly showing what you feel, you speak the magic words that open countless doors. To admit your true feelings is to permit the exchange of the love that everyone longs for. Your task is to keep the channels open so that nourishing energy can flow. Just as the chalice filled with life juice will never be drained, a steady stream of loving power flows through you, a never-ending stream of vital energy. Mm, juicy. Okay. So the next card is the lover's card. Okay, so the essence of the lover's card is surrender. Mm, surrender is such a, <laughs> such a difficult thing to do. And I've been practicing it quite often these days. So the essence, surrender, love in all is its aspects on all levels, platonic as well as erotic, deep merging, dissolving, homecoming, soulmate, bosom buddy, like Anne of Green Gables, yo. <laughs> um, that is the second card in the row that said dissolving. Okay, so the inner message of this card, to be able to surrender completely, you must be at the height of your strength. Most people think only the weak surrender. Most people think Oh, sorry, I was gonna read the same thing. But the opposite is true. You have to have the fortitude to let everything go and fall into love itself. Without expectations, without knowing whether the beloved will respond in kind or not. This can only happen with a vast and all-encompassing faith in love as such. Love is life's most important gift. Don't let it atrophy. Mm, atrophy means like weaken, even though it hurts too much sometimes. The fire of love is the eye of the needle through which every human being must pass sooner or later. I'm just gonna say that again. The fire of love is the eye of the needle through which every human being must pass sooner or later. Whoever misses the opportunity remains unfulfilled. The outward manifestation of this card. <sighs> Decide to stay faithful to the love within you. This power does not always flow toward a specific other being. There are many kinds of love don't restrict yourself. Just, just chow your love and life force to flow. I don't really get that. Just, just chow your love and life force to flow. Sometimes there's typos. This is a good time to become aware of a potential partner nearby or on the other side of the screen in my case. Um, learn to discern between the energies and desires you project and those you receive in return. Spiritual, emotional love and harmony can express itself sexually, but does not need to for its own fulfillment. Our sexuality is a marvelous gift from nature not just to preserve the species, but also a way to experience an intimate surrendering and melting into the divine power. Hmm. A lot about love tonight. And now we move on to pleasure. The 
the six of water, pleasure, positive development, well-being, contentment and happiness, fun, success in love, inner relaxation, natural harmony. Now you can relax. Let go of those mental and emotional tensions. Your life force is flowing calmly and sweetly, nourishing your whole system, helping you regain your inner equilibrium quite easily. Allow yourself to enjoy life a whole lot more and on all levels. So much is possible now. You are ready to tackle new projects with confidence, thus succeeding without a lot of stress. You may even enjoy your daily routine. See, imagine that if you enjoyed your daily routine. Seize this happy moment to clear up some emotional matters with friends and loved ones. Establish a new basis from which to proceed. If you honor and treat yourself well, you will treat others well accordingly. Well, that's how it happens. Our relationship with ourself is mirrored in our relationship with others. If we don't have a good relationship with ourselves, we don't know how to love ourselves, we'll find that. If we don't trust ourselves, we'll find all these dynamics um, play out in our other relationships many times. So, what was the Ace of Water again? So, wait. Fertility, surrender, and pleasure. <sighs> pleasure is something that I haven't, don't feel like I've really experienced a lot of or like, have had like a distorted or like a diluted view of. Um, it's, and when you start breaking it down, like when I started to break my stuff down about pleasure, I started to realize that my gateway to pleasure many times was things that I, I, I was actually doing to numb my own emotions um, because they were too overwhelming for me, but this was not on a conscious level. This was very like repetitive and routine and not, not anything that I was like doing because I knew I was doing it. Um, so my gateway to my gateways to pleasure are still kind of, how would I say it? Unfolding right now. Um, because I have been doing a lot of work on these numbing behaviors and um, and really like like blowing them up, you know, blowing them up in my life and and shining light on that. And um, I don't feel like we're really taught that we get to choose pleasure. And I feel like a lot of us get stuck in these really, um, dreary negative thought patterns that we don't even realize. Most of our thoughts are like repetitive. Like I don't, I forget the statistics on it, but it's like, um, something like we have like the same, like 95% of the same thoughts every day, unless we like really do like try to have different thoughts and, and, um, like choose to have different thoughts and spend time having, you know, for like bringing different thoughts into the forefront of our mind. So that's kind of what came through about pleasure for me. Fertility. Hmm. Fertility, pleasure and surrender. So this is the first full moon. Yeah, Brian says most people think pleasure is sexual. I mean, honestly, do they? Any input would be um, super appreciated by anyone who ends up watching this. I don't know that a lot of people consider um, pleasure as sexual, Bri. I have to say. I think maybe some do. I think maybe a lot of men do. 
I don't know. I'm not trying to stereotype anybody. Um, just talking from my own experience, I guess. But okay, so I feel like like I'm like some the cards are coming together for me, and I have I have um, something that wants to come out. So we are sitting. And the first full moon of 2022, 17 days into a brand new year. Um, and this is fertile ground, you know? I mean, any day we could look at this, we could look at a specific day as being fertile land that gets to be, you know, um, what's that word? Tilled not really tilled though it's something else but my farmer my farmer vocab is out the window right now but um so this is fertile ground this year right and we're in it and we get to choose what we want to happen this year does it mean it's all gonna happen no but we get to map it out we we there's so many people you know now um like the, the mentors that I follow it and these, these different entrepreneurs that I follow, all these people had these workshops for 2022, these visionary workshops, mapping out the different months um, as a means to manifest what you're trying to call in. And does it always manifest? No. A lot of times it's said that people say that it does manifest though. We get to choose the bottom line. We get to look ahead at the year and be like, what would I like to happen this year? You know? And then what, what is taught is that we map it out and we take some action, but we also play with the energy of surrender because it's said that if we have a vision, like if, if a, a desire or a vision comes through for us, it's meant for us. Um, and so a way to get there without being so active and, and um, dipping really heavily into the masculine energy, which can be very over exertive and can cause uh, burnout and uh, masculine energy is very forceful. So what, what like is taught is like, to map stuff out, but then kind of surrender to the energy of the flow of life. And, you know, it's so wild to wake up, literally wake up out of a freaking, you know, essential coma in my mid thirties and start to really question everything about life and everything I was taught. And then begin to find that personally, I feel we learned completely backwards, opposite, upside down bullshit. And so a lot of the reason I've always had this rebellious tendon, these rebellious tendencies and like this rebel inside of me, but a huge part of how I feel is like the shit that we were taught is, is backwards and upside down. And like, I want to rebel against that. And I want to prove everything wrong almost, you know? Um, and so what I have really learned is, is going with this flow of life and playing with the energy. A lot of times we think that in order for us to accomplish something, we have to push, we have to force, we have to make it happen. Um, and when life throws us a curveball, something that we're not, you know, that we weren't expecting, we get all freaking up in arms. We get into all this fear. We get into all this anxiety. We get into like, we're going to force harder now and we're going to get this done. And, and it's like, we end up fighting life and causing resistance. And I just talked about resistance a couple days ago, you know, and how resistance actually, we think that force, we've been taught that force is like so beneficial and it gets us where we need to go and all the things. Most of my life, my superpower was that I could force myself to do everything. But the power is really not in the force. And it said it in that resist in that surrender card. It said something along the lines of a lot of people think that surrender is weak, but surrender is actually your it's showing your strength when you can come across 
any different hurdle that comes your way and you can be like, I got this. And the way I view it, and I'm not saying you need to view it this way, but the way that I view it is like, life is a teacher, you know? And I've looked in, I've read like stuff about Buddhism and I've learned that like, they literally teach from a young age that life isn't easy and you're gonna come against hurdles and it's all for the greater good. And I feel like, like we're not taught that. We're just like, we need to make everything happen. And, and like life is hard and all this stuff. And it's like, and like, it's just different. I feel like we aren't taught that like things are gonna come at us, but like we can still be okay. It's almost like we're taught to like shut down when things come at us and kind of become like a victim. But if you look at life as a teacher and everything coming at you as a lesson for your greater good, then that helps you surrender more. And the more that you surrender, which like I said, is not fucking easy. It's really hard. This, uh, this little babe in here is a big surrender, uh, the biggest one of my life. And I was, I have been, you know, in moments terrified <laughs> What, why, how, what, what do I do? I don't know, but it's a surrender, you know? Um, wait, Brian, you wrote stuff. The flames of society. I don't really know what you mean by that. Um, so I guess that's what I have to say about surrender. I hope that any of it made sense because I don't know what I said. And, um, okay, so... First, first uh, full moon of 2022, we're looking at the whole year. It's fertile, fertile ground for us to till and plant seeds in and start to, start to decide what seeds we want to plant so we can start watering them and attempt to manifest what we want to manifest from this year, knowing that we're going to come up against life and the best way to move through those hurdles is not to force our way through, but say, okay, what can I learn from this? How can I go forward? How can this make me better? How, how can I not be a victim from the circumstance? How can I find power in the circumstance instead of turning it and being like, woe is me, life is against me, the world is against me, all the things. And then how can we mind fuck ourselves <laughs> to get pleasure out of things that normally don't bring us pleasure and how can we also invite more pleasure into our lives and so what I have you know like I was saying a lot of us have these monotonous thought patterns and these ways of thinking and so let's say like about our job Let's say, and you know, one part of the pleasure thing was like, imagine loving your daily schedule every day. Like, can you imagine that? But what tends to happen also with the society, the way that I see it, is that we are programmed heavily with a lack mentality, meaning we don't really focus on what we have we focus more on what we don't have and we essentially make our life revolve around what we don't have. And so whenever you put your focus somewhere, that's, that's what expands in your life. So if we're focusing on what we don't have, that's going to be like the big thing in our life is like, we're always going to be focusing on what we don't have. When we focus on what we're abundant in, what we do have, then our gratitude, we have more gratitude in our life. So when it comes to work or like day-to-day -day monotonous things like laundry and dishes and making the bed and whatever, um, how can we derive more pleasure from doing these things? How can we maybe look at our job, unless we absolutely hate our job and we should really quit and go get another job, like, please do that. But if you feel like you're on the right path, but like there's certain parts of your job that you're like, uh, how can you focus on the abundance of that instead of the lack? And 
Also, how can you make things more fun and more pleasurable, right? Can you turn on a song and dance while you're doing the dishes or folding the laundry? Can you um, listen to a podcast that expands your mind? Can you whatever, you know, how can you bring in more fun and more pleasure into the beginning of this year so that you can maybe start new trends and a new way of being in 2022? Do you want to be the same person you've always been this year? That is a really, really amazing question to ask yourself, especially on a full moon, in a full moon energy, because full moon energy is for shedding. It's for shedding parts of us and old identities. And I was actually going to hold, I was considering holding like a full moon um, healing session tonight. And then I decided against it. But what I was going to say is now that we're 17 days into 2022 and we have feel for this year and maybe what we want to call in for this year, um, what is what doesn't fit anymore? What part of you, what different characteristics within, within your identity feel stagnant? What do you want to release for this year? And what seeds are you planting to become? Flames of society is what I feel is a punishment we feel when we don't accept or agree with what society pushes on us that we don't agree with. Okay. I've just never heard it said like that. Um... So considering, I lost my train of thought for a second. So really good time to think about what pieces of yourself have you outgrown or do you want to outgrow? What do you, what, what are you leaving here tonight on the night of the full moon? And can you leave it with love? Can you love it before you leave it? Oh, I like that. Can you love it before you leave it? So what was I thinking about my, okay. So earlier this week, I did this releasing ceremony with, with one of my mentors. It was like a video. And uh, she, she asked this question, something very similar. And so what I thought to myself is like, what part of my personality do I, do I want to like start kind of releasing? And what came up is this part of me that identifies so heavily with being traumatized. I have uncovered a lot of trauma in my life. Um, it has held me back in many ways, it has been a fucking prison for me in many ways, but what we focus on expands, right? And so do I want to keep holding this identity of like, I'm so traumatized, I'm so traumatized, I'm moving through trauma. Do I want to keep holding that? I don't feel like it fits me anymore. In some ways, I feel it's smothering me. In some ways, I feel it's holding me back. I always will be moving through this healing journey. I'm always going to be attempting to improve myself. I actually believe that instead of age being a degenerative process, that it gets to be a, um, what was the word? It gets to be, a, oh, I can't remember the word, damn it. <laughs> um, like a restorative process. Like we get to age like a fine wine. We get to get better as we age. Um, so <sighs> I keep losing my train of thought, guys. So I'm leaving this freaking identity that I've clung to, that I've integrated into me. <laughs> Shut up. I'm leaving this like traumatized identity behind because yes, I've moved through a lot. Yes, I still have some, but that's not going to take up my entire life. It's not going to, it's not going to take up as much space in my identity as I once allowed it to. I'm leaving it behind. But before I leave it, I'm going to say, I love you. I love you. Traumatized Carly. It's okay. I have so much compassion for you. You're fucking amazing for everything you did. I love you so much. 
and you have served me, but it's time to part and say goodbye. Good day. <laughs> good, good evening. Good night. <laughs> so that's it. That's what I got today. <laughs> so, I feel like this was so silly. I hope that you got something from it. Um, I hope that you, I don't know. I hope that you are doing well. I hope that you, if you're feeling emotional, a lot of emotions can come up during these moons. If you're feeling emotional, love yourself. That's it. It's all going to be okay. It's going to be an amazing year. And, um, that's it. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you so much for hanging out with me, Bri Bri. Good night.